In 2014, a small craft called Philae landed on the surface of Comet 67P Churyumov Gerasimenko in a mission destined to make history. Unfortunately, things didn't quite go as planned. When it touched down, it was supposed to be held by harpoons on the surface, but it didn't. Uh, these harpoons did not work, and so it bounced. Lawrence O'Rourke led the team that located the wayward lander, which had ended up stuck on its side underneath a cliff. This awkward position meant that some of the intended experiments didn't work. For example, the drill, we know now that the drill didn't penetrate the surface, primarily because it was uh, too high above the, the surface itself. The Philae lander provided the first direct measurements of the comet's surface, but because of the crash landing, it couldn't complete its full mission and reveal the secrets of the comet's icy interior. Or so everyone thought. Now Lawrence and his team have turned the crash to their advantage. By poring through thousands of photos of the comet's surface with forensic precision and reinterpreting data from Philae's other sensors, Lawrence and his team have been able to reconstruct what happened the day Philae crashed, and in doing so, got the first ever glimpse inside a comet. Philae was lost for about two years. Well, I led the, the lander search uh, campaign to try to find an image Philae on the surface of the comet. But very close to the end of the mission, there was two images that came down which struck me as being very, very unusual. They showed what looked like uh, ice that had been sliced open. It was actually if somebody had got a chainsaw or something and actually sliced through the ice. Lawrence suspected that on its accidental journey across the comet, Philae had touched down on this particular boulder, scraping aside the hard, dusty surface to reveal the bright ice underneath. By combining thousands of photos into a 3D model of the comet's surface, the team managed to pinpoint the exact location of the touchdown site, just 30 metres from Philae's final resting place. You can see on the left hand side, the touchdown point, which shows the crevice between the two boulders. Now the image has been enhanced primarily because we want to see Philae lander, which is hidden the distance underneath the cliff. Careful examination of photos of the boulder gave Lawrence some clues as to how exactly the lander had impacted the ice. The ice at the end of the, the crevice uh, shows an impression of Philae in, in, in its surface. Philae had actually compressed the ice there. And when we look in from another image, we could measure that this depth was 25 centimetres. This 25 centimetre measurement would turn out to be a vital piece of information. Now, when you compress something, you put your foot, for example, in snow, then you gradually notice it gets harder and harder. And you can actually tell with the time it takes you for to compress it, it tells you the strength of that snow. Lawrence realised that they could use this concept to calculate the strength of the ice that Philae crashed into. But they needed one more piece of information. How long it took Philae to compress that 25 centimetres. And that information came from an unexpected source. So the Rosetta spacecraft has a number of different magnetometers, magnetic uh, instruments on board, which were there to measure the magnetic field around the comet. And the Philae lander had its own magnetometer. But because Philae was crossing the surface of the comet, then the magnetic data it was generating was changing, primarily because of the orientation of Philae. It was rotating, it was flipping, it was changing direction. The magnetometer was acting a bit like a gyroscope, detecting every time Philae moved or changed direction. This meant Lawrence and his team could pinpoint the exact moment that the lander crashed into the boulder and compressed the ice. So this graph contains the data from the magnetometer instrument on the Philae lander. And when we look at this area in particular, you can see spikes. And this duration, this spike is three seconds. And we know, therefore, that it took three seconds to compress the ice. Calculating the compressive strength revealed that the interior of the boulder was incredibly soft. The ice is softer than freshly fallen snow. It's softer than the foam that you find on the seashore when you're walking on the seashore. It's softer than the, the, the froth that you find on top of your, of your cappuccino. This incredibly soft interior had been hidden inside a hard outer crust. Philae's crash landing meant that its drill couldn't sample the inner material. But the lander's haphazard journey across the comet provided an unexpected peak below the surface. Philae has in fact excavated the, the ice. It's actually broken the top covering of the dust which was covering it and exposed something that was hidden inside for billions of years. And so you're seeing really the, the interior of a comet 
that has not been exposed since its formation. When Philae crash landed six years ago, it looked like some parts of its mission would never be completed. Now, thanks to some ingenious detective work, Lawrence and his team have uncovered the first ever glimpse inside a comet and helped the Philae lander make one final contribution to cometary science.